just say hip hop. Well, what about hip hop? <laughs> what about it do you love? I mean, like, but that's the it. thing. It's not real. This is not real shit. I understand this. Welcome to the Fade to Black podcast, hosted by OMG Studios. We are your hosts. Um, I'm Sunflower V. Rose. Homies, we could just sound off. Oh, I'm Imani Johnson. I'm wild with my full name. I'm Imani. <laughs> I'm David Dunnington. I usually just go by David on here, but I feel like I need to say my last name. David Dunnington. D-U-N-N-I-N-G-T-O-N. <laughs> you want to give him your middle name, too? I got two middle names, and uh, they, they got to do a little more to figure that out. All right. Now the AJ makes sense. Yes. Sorry, give no hands. Um, <laughs> anyway, today we are going to be talking about Rick Fue Yuma and Michael Elliott's 2002 film, Brown Sugar. Um, so before we get into it, I just want to say, the hoe is mine. Yeah, yeah, the hoe is mine. And... He realized it was nothing more than just friends. Nothing? Nothing. Just friends. Just friends. Dre, I've been in love with you from the first day I saw you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> so <laughs> why do you, if you were to describe this film to a fellow homie, um, how would you describe it? Like, what is this? What is this movie about? It really does feel like a love letter to hip hop. Um, the yeah, it, it feels like it was more focused on like the hip hop theme than it was like being a realistic rom com. Um, okay. Yeah, I just had some I had some questions, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's like if you love hip hop and you love black love and complicated will they's or won't they's this movie's for you word david what do you think how would you describe this film um who i would describe this film first of all you know i watch this film and i think i'm not trusting nobody whose best friend calls them baby all the time like that's yeah. just not about to happen. Anyway, <laughs> if there here's here's okay. I'm sorry. Ask the question again. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe this film to a fellow homie at a bar somewhere? Um, this movie is a black rom com that, you know, isn't perfect, but you know, black people deserve tongue in cheek, you know, not so overly complicated rom coms just like all the white folks do. Mm-hmm. Um but it's a uh movie about these two people uh who grew up together and they like have a will they want their relationship and they like love each other and they love hip-hop and they're both like hip-hop kind of like moguls one's like a writer one's a like a talent agent i guess Mm -hmm. um and like how like their relationship to like loving hip-hop relates to like loving each other and like rekindling that love and all that um i say that can I say something else? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, I say that... Oh, fuck. This is going to sound bad. I say that... Say, saying that being like... I feel like that sounds smarter than what the movie actually is. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, I, mean, I have a lot to say about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're going to get into it. I, I'll, I'll say that I watched this as like a very young small child um back with my dvd players um so i watched this in love and basketball back to back all the time so to me i would describe it as like love and basketball but with hip-hop um it it does feel like it's like the producer was like we need to make another one of these yeah yeah but what's funny is it it still has basketball in it (laughs) yes but that's because hip-hop and and basketball is like they're they're tied together you know this is true yeah and oh, it's a hip hop. Okay, well, now tell me how do you really feel about this? Um, I I definitely picked this film because I feel like for me it was yes a love letter to hip hop and to like black rom coms. Like I think this one for me still stood a little bit more of the test of time as I look back on some of them. 
uh, especially compared to like a Love Jones, I'm just like, this was red flags everywhere. I couldn't yeah. get into it. But coming back to Brown Sugar, I'm just like, oh no, this is unfortunately still me. Um, <laughs> too often just like fawning over a bestie. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just like, mm, I, I, I don't know. I love it. It, it feels like it sparked um, a lot of research for me because I was like, if Sanaa Lathan ever were to ask me when I fell in love with hip hop, I'd have to come correct with some facts. Um, so I'm just like, it was a good kickoff. But but what do you think? Where Why do you think I picked this? And then what are your first impressions? Yeah, I think that this was an, uh, I think that you picked this because it, again, is like one of those movies that's been around for like all of our lives um and like again me too i haven't really watched this movie as an adult i've only seen it as a child um and i think that yeah as a kid like little imani saw this movie more romantic than it is mm -hmm. but um yeah like watching this movie now i'm like i feel like sydney was such a flat character i'm like what does this woman want yes. in her life other than a man <laughs> like it just seems like she wants a man meanwhile like tay Diggs, he's like i want to my own record label i want to i want to sign a real artist like he had real wants in his life and i was just like who is this woman like it felt like a a man a man's idea of like a cool hip-hop lady and then it's like okay okay let's just start off with the montage because it's like that montage you have all of these like rap legends like mm -hmm. talking about them falling up in love with hip-hop and like these are supposed to be her faves right so it's like she don't got no ladies like where's mc light like where's yo yo like where I where were the, the ladies thing. like and so that's why i was like it felt so male centric like i understand that like sydney was a the protagonist but like it still felt so male centered and like i feel like if a woman wrote this movie it would have been very different um 100 100 percent, it would have been different. yeah yeah like because it, it was i was just like she just does not feel real and like that bridal shower party i was just like uh, I I don't know. I'm like Sydney's gift wouldn't be so weird at like I feel like a regular bridal shower party, but also it's like why would you get this gift for a woman you don't know? Like, well, she didn't buy the gift. Francine bought it for her, and then who's just Francine? Gave it to her, her be Queen, Queen Latifah. 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 Oh, also justice for Queen Latifah. It's like this movie about <laughs> hip hop. <laughs> it's this That's movie about Queen hip hop. Latifah's the whole reason and, and the movie happens. It's like what? What? what y'all ain't celebrating the queen like Queen Latifah? Y'all could have got her on two counts. The fact that it, she's Queen Latifah and this is a hip hop movie, mm -hmm. and the fact that Sydney works at a magazine like this is Khadijah James over here. Like justice for Queen Latifah. Who is Sydney? I don't know. <laughs> You know, I okay. Well, I will say that to me, though, Sydney does have some wants. If anything, she was cool being dude's best friend. Um, she's like it, it, her own interviewer. She just has a love for hip hop. Francine or uh, Francesca, what's her name? Um, Francine. damn, Francine. It is Francine. Okay, Francine. Um, is the one who was just like, I think you need to have a man. I think that you're not interested because you haven't found a connection with anybody other than Dre. And she's like, me and Dre are cool. Like he already tried it once. I'm cool with being in a relationship as friends. And she's like, nah, stir that shit up. Um, <laughs> and so I'm just like, they, she was chilling. And then even when she was just trying to do an interview with Boris Cujo, he's the one who's like, trying to be an opportunist um and like turn it into a date. Francine is trying to push her to turn it into a date. But she was, she was like, I'm just, I just want to interview this man. I just want to talk to him about his love for hip hop. And even even Dre is just like, you're you're getting a man now to compete with me. And she's like, I'm getting a man because this is my own life. And what am I supposed to do? Exactly. It's like, <laughs> see, girl, you don't know what you want in your life. Like, what? She just wants to love hip hop. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all she wanted. That's all. <laughs> and, but then it's like her book. It's like, I feel like the book kind of got lost in the story. It's like the beginning. It's like she's stressing about this book. And then it's like we were like an hour 15 into the movie before she mentioned that book again. And it's <laughs> <Yes>. like, <laughs> so and I was like, is this a want for her? Like, does she want to? How does she feel about publishing her first book? Like, can we talk about this mm. a little bit more? Like, she mm -hmm. just felt mm -hmm. so stagnant. And I felt like Dre was allowed to be much more interesting and, like, go on more of a journey of, like, working at this shitty record label. And then, you know, feeling like a sellout, leaving, finding most deaf in a cab. Um, and being like, you are that real hip hop I like. 
and wanting to like you know use him to boost his own record label at the same time having difficulty in his marriage to this woman he only knew for a month before mm-hmm. marrying her um i just like he had a way more interesting story and like sydney was just like there i don't disagree Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, this movie. Oh my God. So here's the thing. Here's the thing, y'all. The hip hop element, I feel, I feel like every element is not done enough. I'm, I'm, mm, yeah. First of all, I like to apologize to Rick Fumiwa. Um, we talked about dope and I shit on that. And I'm going to shit on this. Um, <laughs> uh, first of all, I do think there's a, like a lot of genius stuff in it. And I don't think, you know, I do think he's a good filmmaker. Um, I'm just, it just so happens that we're shitting on these two movies. Not we, me, David. I was like, I have been Team Rick on both of these. I'm, and I've been I'm pro, a soul I'm still voice. pro Rick. I'm very much pro Rick Femi Ua. He's way more. It, it, listen, power to the power to black filmmakers. Um, that opening part with all the rappers, despite Queen Latifah not being in there for like dumb reasons, that scene is the best scene in the whole goddamn movie. It is. It is. And I, so, okay, I should preface that I didn't grow up with this movie. Um, I knew of it, you know, I knew, I know Tay Diggs and shit. I've seen Love and Basketball as a kid, but I didn't see this. Um, but obviously, you know, I still felt the vibe like, wow, this is just like Love and Basketball. <laughs> but, um, uh, so I was kind of like, all right, this movie's going to be like, all right, whatever. So then this opening happens and I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be a cool movie. Mm-hmm. Wait, hold on. Is this going to be this weird, like, hybrid doc thing where, you know, because the point in the story is, like, she's interviewing these rappers, right? Um, So I thought we were going to get maybe more of that. I think, like, I don't know, the element of hip-hop, the element of, like, got messed, got, like, I don't know. It was kind of stale to me. Like, they just say hip-hop. What about (laughs) hip-hop? What about it do you love? It's I mean, like, but we that's just love the it. It's thing. not real. This is not real shit. I understand this came out during the the peak of the bling era, mm-hmm. so it's very like anti bling era. But like, just knowing where we are, it's just like I don't know. <sighs> it just made me cringe, to be honest. And I like felt like the characters were all selfish, except for everybody they were fucking over, mm-hmm. and like. The weird thing of like trying to make like his like his new wife seem like annoying and a bitch when she seems very reasonable. Yes. She's very nice to him. <laughs> yes. She's very mm-hmm. communicative to her to his best friend being like, look, like I'm not trying to beef with you. You're just like way too close to them. And I'm jealous of that. And I don't mm-hmm. like it. And that's what adults should say. Yeah. <laughs> Again, this is a rom-com, but I'm just like, you know, I'm just like I had more sympathy for all the people they were fucking over. I did. <laughs> than, than those two also i'm sorry tay diggs is a beautiful man he's a beautiful man i could not get over that forehead and i refuse to believe that a bunch of women would be fighting tooth and nail for a nigga with a forehead like that oh, i'm sorry oh, <laughs> tay diggs, I disagree. I'm tay like, diggs, tay diggs could get it any day yeah i was like no, okay as soon as he shaved period, that hair, period. as soon as he went bald it was forehead included it's a part I'm of the saying, beauty. I'm saying as soon as he shaved that head, he's 10 out of 10. He was 9 out of 10 with that with, with that hair, with that with that hairline all the way back there. This is just me being a dickhead, all right? I'm like, <laughs> that's just classic. Okay, okay, but- Tay Diggs. It's like, I think Best Man, The Wood, it's like, that's just Tay Diggs. That's 90s Tay Diggs. I feel like right. Bald Tay Diggs. The Wood Diggs is another Rick film. Is like interesting i'll have to revisit that um i feel like bald tay diggs is like very like this is the 2000s tay diggs we get bald right. tay you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> who's like really showing his broadway side and that he is an mt kid and i'm like I'm oh like, yes i see i got to see tay diggs and hedwig in the angry itch but oh, that's cool he seemed a little uncomfortable um <laughs> So I was like, oh, I actually came for Neil Patrick Harris. I'm so glad I got to see Tay Diggs, but I also wish I saw Neil Patrick Harris. Anyway, um, okay, but to the point of it's not really about hip hop, hip hop is him. Like, I'm like, hip hop was never really hip hop. It was always about Dre. So to me, this film also sounds like Commons, um, I used to love her. That's about hip hop. 
exactly and then they just turned this whole film from hip-hop into the actual rom-com into it's about the two of them so like even in her book she's she when she gets on the interview she's like it's called i used to love him but and then she dedicates it to to hip-hop i loved you always and forever and will and so it's like when you go back and listen to those parts when she's talking about hip-hop she's talking about dre the whole time so she's like uh um i grew up with hip-hop um, I thought I was going to outgrow hip hop. As soon as she like gets engaged to Boris Cujo, she's like, sometimes uh, hip hop and rap is the same as like saying, I love you and being in love. Like um, it's, it seems like she was really on top of her book when she was focused on herself. And then she starts getting involved in the rom-com of it all. And so the book is getting delayed because she's discovering how she's feeling about hip hop, which is how she feels about Dre. And so that's why she doesn't even come back to it until she's in those moments by herself where she's reflecting, oh, I I thought it was going to be over. I thought hip hop was dead. And that's why Dre's like, you talking about hip hop's changing? Like you want to change what's going on? And she's like, are we still talking about hip hop? He's like, we've always been talking about hip hop, but that means we've always been talking about us, girl. It's never been about hip hop. It's this movie was never about hip hop. It starts off. It wants to be. And I agree. Like now thinking about it, I'm just like, if she was also a producer and like Queen Latifah was her artist, then we could have even saw um, her and most Def get together a lot sooner. And that would have been real cute. And we could have heard that type of combo and we could have heard that verse ran 10, but you know, hit me up for the sequel. Um, <laughs> but I'm just like... Queen Latifah was just there to be, like, her black best friend. Now, like, yeah, girl, you need a man. Like, get your man, girl. Like, I wanted I like more out of Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah. Woman a lot. <laughs> she is. <laughs> if, <laughs> she is. But I'm like, I wanted more out of her, especially in this movie about hip-hop. But, like, I agree that, like, yeah, it was supposed to be, like, an analogy, a metaphor for, like, really their relationship. But I feel like we started this movie so hard in hip hop. I wanted to follow that through and it just got lost. But like also when you think about the Erica Badu song that was on the soundtrack, love of my life. And like mm-hmm. that song is also about hip hop. Um, Which was created for this movie. Yes. It was, it was on the soundtrack. And so mm-hmm. it's like that, I mean that song is saying the same thing of like, you know, I thought we would outgrow each other, but really, like, you're the love of my life. But I wanted that hip-hop theme to follow through more. But also, she got comment on the song because it's, like, referencing the thing. But also, it's about the duet of the lovebirds. Like, it's about the love, you know? It's not really about (laughs) hip-hop. I just wasn't here for the love. I was like, I just don't get this relationship. It's like... Why are you marrying this woman you've only known for a month? And it's like, he, she says, like, oh, no, he, he's always just, like, dating somebody for a month. The longest relationship he's been in is, is a month. And it's like, what is going on? Like, why are you getting <laughs> married? And then and then it's just like, yeah, then y'all, like, y'all have, like, a little moment right before the wedding. Like. And then he gets mad. And then, and then he gets mad at, at, at fucking Reese for cheating on him. Bro, you cheated the night before the wedding. You cheated the, the night before the wedding. What are you talking about? What? Like, that did, yeah. I was just like, you not shit. This this man is not shit. What's a not is not shit. Again, like, these were horrible people, very selfish people. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm, I was just like, okay. Again, I think because I remembered this movie as a kid as, like, just way more romantic and, like, a nicer love mm-hmm. story. And now, like, grown woman brain is like, hell no. Like, what the fuck? I think also, like, I, I mean, not to, like, write for a movie, but, you know, we can do whatever we want. It's free country. Um, uh, I wonder if, like, it would have been better. First of all, I mean, I... I'm not acting like I can do a better job and I'm like not a black woman who could like write something better. But, 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 hear me out. Like, it feels like it would have been better if like, like she had this love for hip hop, but hip hop also isn't perfect. It's got all these problems. Mm -hmm. It's misogynistic. It's pro-capitalist. And what if she was the same way she was battling with these, the, the, the flaws of Dre or somebody else or just men, period, was like that, like if it tied that way. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like it was more of a direct metaphor. Yeah. Um, or not a direct. Well, it was a direct metaphor, but it was so direct that it was like eye roll. So I don't know. I wish it was. I wonder if it was like, like there is something smart there is why I'm kind of like annoyed. And it's like, 
Like there's like if it was just like just straight up dumb rom com, I think I would have been more ch- charitable. But I because agree. there's like little moments of genius in it, mm-hmm. very very short, but they're like fuck, like that's cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, I don't know. I guess I would. I, I don't. I guess that's just me being like this sh- should have been the story. But I know that's like wrong to do as a artist sometimes. But I don't know. Yeah, I just I I I would have liked another draft of this movie before they went to production, just like to tie it up a little bit more because, yeah, it just it just fell kind of apart, and then at the end mm-hmm. they tried to build it all back together with her being at that Angie Martinez interview, just hijacking Angie's show. Talking about, I love you, Dre. Like I'm like everyone <laughs> on the radio. I would have been in my car. Like what the fuck am I listening? to? Dude, Angie, speak up. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? I'm just like, now that would be such a viral moment. And everybody would buy the book because they're like, yeah. who's Dre? Who's him? What is, yeah. he's hip hop? Like, I'd be reading the book with a whole different lens. <laughs> yeah, truly, truly. I feel like, um, and Queen Latifah rocking the boat and everything, right? Um, Reese in that moment, because I'm just thinking about when you were talking about him cheating and then still being mad at her for cheating. I'm like, he was so excited to celebrate having an excuse to get out of this relationship is what it seems like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and especially just like pulling up on old girl with um, her gym trainer. And that's why he brought Sanaa with him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because he's like, oh, no, girl, we about to. He's like, it's about to be us today. Like, it's fine. <laughs> he's like, we're going to come and end my relationship together. And that's why he takes her home. And he's like, let's talk about hip hop because it's, it's us. <laughs> um, and she's like, but we but we were friends. I'm confused. Um, I lost my train of thought. Where was I going with this? I don't know. I think he, I just, he is an ass. He should be held accountable. But um, Nicole and Boris, you know, they, they would have made a cute couple. It would have been great if they got together at the end. And no, they are in real life. So exactly. They still would. You know what the problem is truly too, is that like, it's not that just Dre sucks. Is that the film doesn't know that Dre sucks. Yes. Mm-hmm. He does like, not if improve. the film acknowledged that Dre sucked. It'd be a little different, but the film thinks that Dre is reasonable. Yeah, because that was also like there were so many moments when like he was talking to Sana, and I'm like, this man is so misogynistic. Like, this is supposed to oh, be yeah. your bestie, girl, and like your bestie is so misogynistic, and like it, you're it's just like it's, you're unaffected. Like again, she did not feel like a real woman to me. I was like, girl, speak up. Like. No, but she's she's doing the pick me thing of just like she whatever he says it has to be the haha. It's funny, like I'll just go along with it. So I'm like, it's real. Cause, but you're right. Like he he said, there's only two types of women, hoes and women who look like hoes but are really smart. Yeah. And, but then also Sanaa, who's just like, well, which one am I, girl? Like, girl what the fuck? <laughs> Yes, but you in a whole different category. He don't even put see you as girl. You are home girl, which for some reason is the thing that most people kind of want, but then are just like, nah. But you the home girl. Like if I fuck this up, if I actually see you as a woman, then I'm not going. I'm going to fuck it up. Like I want to fuck like, you. That's a problem. If I actually see you as a woman, as opposed, it's exactly. Like, it's it's very much like the manic pixie girl trope, but like the black version, like the home girl mm-hmm. trope, the cool laid back home girl who is cool with you saying all this fucked up shit and never says anything. And it's just like, yeah, Mm -hmm. it's all good. It's cool. I'm unbothered. Yeah, like women can be hoes. Yeah. But never (laughs) like calling out her like male friends. Like one, yeah, she, it was giving pick me. I did not appreciate Sydney's character. I would have been like, what the fuck? And Queen Latifah always pushing this man. I'm like, girl, sit down. Who are you, Queen Latifah? She'd be the type to defend Russell Simmons. Yes, she would be the type to defend Russell Simmons. Like, <laughs> who's in the movie? But, yes. which was honestly, it was cool, you know, for the time. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> um. Okay. Well, because clearly we all have such a love for hip hop um, that this movie is not satisfying. <laughs> that that thirst. I'm curious. When did you fall in love with hip hop? It mine is a weird thing because so like I was gonna listen to like rap and hip hop my whole life, but like 
during the bling era specifically when I was a little kid, first of all, I just didn't like a lot of that stuff. I like that stuff a little more now, but I just didn't like it as a kid. And I think especially I didn't like it because my dad loved it. Mm. So like anything my dad liked was uncool. You know what I mean? Weirdly. So like, I just like didn't like that shit. But then I don't know. I think maybe it was like middle school or something. Um, I don't know. I think I just like whenever I just started, whenever I was just listening to music on my own, I think the problem was my dad was making me listen to stuff. And then I don't remember which artist it was, but to think the freedom to just like pick the own, my own song. I think like having an iPod or something and being like, I'm going to play this track over and over and over. Mm-hmm. Like that's what made me like fall in love with it. And that's just like music period. But, yeah. um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like a rap, like the first hip hop song. I was like, bro, this is my shit. Mm. Um, Ooh, that's a good I don't know. Question. Weirdly, like, it might be song? like Ice Cube song. It might be like "Nigga, You Love to Hate" or something. <laughs> 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 <We're> just, <laughs> I still love that song. I like. I just. I like vividly remember that song as a kid. Like my parents blasting that in the kitchen while we we're like doing chores. Mm. Which is like you know I don't know why we're blasting that song, <laughs> but. Um, Everybody's got yeah. their laundry playlist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I'm like my. I think too. I think my mom like grew up in the hip hop era. Like that was her whole life. Like she was born in 1977, the like birth year of hip hop. So it was like, yeah, I always heard it in the house. Like from as long as I can remember. And it wasn't that I didn't think it was cool. It was just like the thing my mom was interested to. So I right. was like carving out my own sound. Like I was really into Hillary Duff at one point. Um, mm-hmm. Just going, you know, going every every Hillary Duff, you know, album dropping. I'm I'm there. I'm buying it. You know, Raven Simone. I'm there. I'm buying it. But yes, then, um, but like, yeah, all those songs, like, still, like, my mom was playing a lot of Biggie, a lot of Jay Z, a lot of Tribe, and I was like, you know, like bopping my head to it. But I wasn't, yeah, it wasn't. I wasn't mixing it on my CDs. And then mm-hmm. I feel like. Honestly, Drake, dog, like when I, I've always was a huge Degrassi fan. And so it's like when Drake, Aubrey Graham started rapping, um, I think that's when I started paying attention more. And then like my love for Drake grew into like a love for J. Cole, a love for Kendrick, a love for Wale. Mm -hmm. And then I found myself like, that's what I, like I was in that for a minute. And then it was like, as mumble rap, like was kind of getting kind of big is when I like, kind of put my hip-hop koofy on and went back to like 90s like real hip-hop hip-hop and then eventually like graduating out of that into like i love all forms i appreciate Mm -hmm. it all i enjoy its evolution i find it interesting um but so yeah i guess it's drake like 2008 2009 like that's where my love for hip-hop was really blooming but you know i've always had an appreciation for it it's so oh, funny. I, I, sh- I should mention, sorry, right before you say something, I just remembered something. So I do, I actually do remember when I, when hip hop, like why I actually started liking it. It's because of break dancing. Because I loved dancing and break dancing. And like my dad was a B-boy when he was a kid. So he would like always, he showed me like Beat Street and Wild Style and stuff. And that is how I fell in love with it because of like. I think I didn't care about the rap part, but I liked the all culture. the other. I liked, I loved the graffiti mm. and the break dancing. And like when I realized it was more than just like, just, you know, you know, not making fun of rappers. I'm just like trying to, I was just trying to copy a flow or whatever. But you know what I'm saying? Like what I saw, it was like very much a culture of so many other things. Like, you know, hip hop is films, hip hop is this, yeah. hip hop is, you know, it's not just. Dude music. spitting bars and no, stuff. No, it's a whole culture. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's when I fell in love with it, especially because, like, I loved dancing as a kid, so. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm like, I, too, feel like I grew up in uh, a world of wanting to love hip-hop. I feel like hip-hop is uh, my way into black culture as a kid who grew up in, like, a very white space. Um, and so this is, like, not something I got to share too much outside of middle school when like 
I went to a new middle school and now there's just like new kids and now I can actually talk rap in, with them. Um, and so I feel like around that era is also like where Drake Young Money was coming out. There was a, <laughs> there was a lot of like controversy around Drake at the time um, for some reason because uh, people were just like, he's too soft, he's too much of a pretty boy. It was like all the girls like Drake and all the boys in my school just like hated him because girls liked him. Um, so I feel like that's when I started to dive a little bit more into like the actual lyrics. Um, but also, I don't know. I feel like I fell in love with hip hop um, with Tupac for some reason. Um, my dad listened to like a lot of uh, Biggie and Jay Z, and I also didn't care for what he listened to. So I was like, I don't really want gangster rap. I don't want hard lyrics. And so I really liked early Tupac when he was still just like dreaming and talking about the loves of his life and like the aspirations he had for black people and then it's just like it turned um towards the end of his cycle whereas i feel like biggie kind of did the opposite and he's like mm -hmm. he started in a harder place and then was like oh wow look life can change and we should think differently um so i'm just like what an arc for the two of them but yeah. i agree that young money cash money is universal is kind of where it took off for me because that's where i get nikki and I love Nicki Minaj. <laughs> um, like I had a pink wig, I had tutus, like I was already a theater kid. And so to just like have somebody who was so um, aggressively theatrical um, gave me just like a, my own pit to like dive deeper into and really get into the culture. Um, but I guess, yeah, Tupac is like a stepping stone to, to love my own lyrics. Um, and storytelling, like Slick Rick, Dougie Fresh. Um, so great to see them <laughs> in this movie. But I'm just like the the actual storytelling. Listening to my cousins um, rap um, Biz Marquee in a basement made me like go <laughs> back and memorize, um, uh, what is it? Just a friend. So I'm just like, always, it's the lyricism of like hip hop is a language that felt like um, collateral in spaces and I needed to know more, more music right. to communicate with people. That's I a, think it's interesting that like all three of us, and I think this is common a bunch, a lot of like black people our age is like some of us, especially if you're like quote unquote more like quote very, very much with the quotes alternative black kid. <laughs> like mm -hmm. a lot of us are like that rap shit is like what my mom and dad listen to. Like it's kind of funny how like this revolutionary thing became so quickly. <laughs> like just by nature of it being your parents music, it becomes like not cool but i also agree with you guys that like i also started falling love heavy into hip-hop with the young money era. <laughs> like i remember so another thing involving break dancing sorry i'm talking so much i'm a yapper um this is a podcast i know but i just be yapping <laughs> um i want to give other people space to yap also um but uh uh my dad was like we my dad did like a road trip to maine to see his like old friends because those are his like old high school friends slash breakdance crew members <laughs> so then we would drive up there and we're blasting drake so the album thank me later just came out mm, mm -hmm. and then so we're but we're we're listening to that the whole ride and then we're also listening to like for some reason we're also because he's like nostalgic for going home so we're listening to like big daddy daddy kane and stuff like that who, who i was hyped to see in this movie um but uh i don't know that definitely made me like i started liking more boom bap stuff just because I was, like, in the car and, like, I don't know, something about the energy of, like, me and my dad were bonding really hard and, like, we were just driving and, like, that was the first time I was, like, really, like, yeah, I like this rap shit. I was, like, 11 <laughs> <laughs> or 12. <laughs> but it's funny because all my dad's breakdance, because, you know, he's from, my dad, he's not from Maine, he's a military brat, but um, Maine is uh, very white, so all his, like, breakdance crew members were all, he was the only black guy in the crew. <laughs> That's wild. I know it just completely <laughs> flipped. The, you know, I was like, that's not what I was thinking at all. That I had in my, my head. But also now flash forward because David's dad is a Sigma. So I'm just like, and now imagine him actually out here just like stomping the yard with, were they actual black people or was he? Because also the only Sigma I know personally is a white man. A white man. Um, yeah. Shout out Dude, to there'd Matt. be white Sigmas out here. There's maybe. so many white Sigmas. Yes. Here's the thing. If you, some, of the, some of the, like, if they white and they part of a black frat, like, get out of their way because you don't know what the fuck they did <laughs> to join that shit. Like, especially if they're like a Q dog and they're white. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. That nigga yeah. Don't trust a, a dog, fucking, period. 
Yeah. Q dog, period. But he was a white Q dog. Oh, he had to do who knows what the fuck he had to do to get in there. That's some Chet Hanks type <laughs> shit. Oh, my. Oh, my. But yeah, he would be. He would be a Q dog. Um, but <laughs> I was going to say, um, I was going to say, too, like, Sunny, you talking about like hip hop always being this really personal thing to you because, like, mm-hmm. you were in this white space. And I think that. Like, yeah, because I, I went from being in Atlanta where it's like if I enjoyed hip hop while I was in Atlanta, it would have been a completely different experience. But like my love for hip hop grew when I lived in West Virginia. Um, and so it's like even I think about the blog era. It's like I love the blog era. I think that's my yes. love for like, yeah, I love the 80s. I love Run DMC. I'm like, I love blog era hip hop. Um, and like that. I don't think about the like your relationship with the the internet and like the internet is already like such a personal thing. Like your algorithms are so personal to you. Everyone's algorithm looks differently. And mm-hmm. so like discovering hip hop like on like these blog sites, like finding I like came into Drake like during comeback season. So it's like two thousand seven. Like he's still really into grassy. Um Mm-hmm. And it's like finding all of this music. Like he was still running his blog at this point. And I like discovered so much music because of Drake. Like when he had his blog, like I found J. Cole from his blog. I found Kendrick from his blog. Like Kendrick when he had just dropped Section 80. And so, damn. You know, it has always been like, and then like being in West Virginia, it's like I'm not, yeah, I'm not sharing my love for hip hop with anybody because it's like, dynamics are interesting there but like yeah it always being like this really personal thing that like was like i that plugging in your ipod i think about that too like music becoming more personal because of like Mm -hmm. the ipod and because of like the internet and being able to listen to whatever music you want to listen to when you want to listen to it rather than having to listen to the radio all day and hope that they play your favorite song or you know having that album just on hand you know i think that like the internet made music so much more personal and accessible for people um and that and that like escalated the change and so i feel like brown sugar feels so much like a a little time capsule um because it's like just so specific to this really uh specific time in hip-hop when it's still like very black and like you know the only white person in hip-hop is like eminem really um Mm -hmm. you know but it's still this very like black thing um, and so I'm sorry can I interrupt you for two seconds yeah go for it I'm just like uh, shout out to the moment where they are playing the real Slim Shady as Ren and Ten come into the restaurant so I'm just like anyway continue <laughs> yes yes and so uh, you know I'm like it, it, it was interesting it's interesting I think like hip hop is uh, an interesting well hip hop is like a culture um, but it's an interesting genre um, I was reading my like I have a, like a book about black film and it was saying that like black film is unique because it's not a genre in the sense Mm -hmm. of everything else like black films are black cinema is anything with black people in it black people directing it black people writing it black people producing it like that automatically makes it black film and i Mm -hmm. feel like hip-hop kind of works the same way um where it's like hip-hop is not just music it's a style it's a language it's you know a thought a school of thought like you know, um, and I wish that movie got into that more. Like, again, I wish they got into, like, what is hip hop more um, in this rom com? But yeah, I feel like they, they just start to scratch the surface of, like, oh, hip hop and rap are different. And even just like the Dalmatian rappers running 10 coming in, being like, oh, this is, this is our thing. And um, Simon. Uh, Wendell Pierce over here is like uh, I'm here to make deals and <laughs> not yeah. music like I don't care about the culture um, and the fact that like b- before we even hit record but we were just talking about like if I ho- heard the ho is mine on the radio I'd, I'd be tripping like I'm, it, yeah. <laughs> I'm here for I'm it like, this is, <laughs> it's gonna sound so fun I'm gonna catch myself I'm still singing it now <laughs> but but yeah that's a total stark difference from back where we started (laughs) so yeah uh what is what is your current relationship with hip-hop um because me I feel like if Nikki is where I kind of like hook lined and sinker um 
then now I've just been like, oh my gosh, look at all the sons of Nikki. Um, look at all these new female rappers that have taken over that like now I get to fully embrace. And so I feel like I'm in my hip hop, my rap era, because I'm just like, these are the bitches who are giving me my content. Like I've been waiting for y'all. <laughs> um, but also like, I don't know. I, I feel like my relationship with hip hop also feels like very Kendrick, uh, J. Cole, like it's the storytelling for me. I've always been about the lyricism and kind of having more of that like soul funk um, aura that goes into a whole album or song. And so I don't know, I feel I feel like there is a, a difference between rap and hip hop. And for so sure. hip hop still has like its, its place in my heart, even though I doesn't feel like I'm as tapped into it right now. Um, and so I'm like, rap is just flourishing because I'm excited for, <laughs> for this branch and moment. Um, but yeah, what, what's your, what's your relationship to hip hop currently? Um, yeah, like same, like still in love with it. I love all the new places it goes again. So it's like, like someone like Tizo Touchdown. I'm like, I love Tizo Touchdown. Um, hip hop and rap are different. Like I think hip hop is very much the like traditional, like, all about lyricism, all about storytelling, where like rap is more of uh, the action of like how the song is being delivered. Like someone is rapping over a pop beat or over a rock song. Um, right. And that rap is just uh, an element of hip hop, but just because you're rapping doesn't make it hip hop, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like I, again, like ever since I took off that, that hip hop, that hip hop koofy, I am always here for like pushing the genre forward and seeing where it can go because it's still so young when you think about things like jazz or even country music. Um, it's like these those genres are so old. Um, they've been around for over 100 years and here is hip hop just turning 50. So it still has yeah. so like, you know, wherever it goes, like we still have so much far to go, like so much further to go. Um, it's still growing. It's still so young. Uh, and yeah, like I am, I look forward to like reckoning with all of like the negative aspects of it, of like the misogyny, um, like of the, the capitalism of, of, of the, of the thing. But, you know, it's growing up, like it's growing up. It has to mature. It has to have time. People thought that it was a fad, you know, when it started in the 80s, people were like, ah, it's going to be here today, gone tomorrow. And here we are 50 years later. And it's like one of the most popular genres around. Not this year, though. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm just like, wow, like, where are we going? Where to next, y'all? Uh, I feel like I've been negative this whole time and it's going to continue. Um, what's my relationship to hip hop right now? I still love hip hop. You know, I still listen to rap and hip hop every day. I, like you said, I like TJ touchdown. Um, I like what a lot of these girls are doing. These women yeah. out here, um, right. Rapping way better rapping yes. circles around these men. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, that being said, <sighs> I don't know. I'm like in this really nihilistic state with rap right now because the problems we've had for so long have changed and stayed the same. Maybe even gotten worse in parts. Um, it's been super co-opted by the labels to the point where like, I don't know. I'm just, I mean, I don't know if I have room in this in this podcast to like go through my whole qualms about the state of hip hop right now and this review of fucking brown sugar but <laughs> <laughs> like i just like i mean just the diddy stuff that's popping up right now mm -hmm. i mean we're talking about nikki we love nikki but like the shit that nikki's been doing um again i'm glad for the new generation beyond nikki <laughs> i'm glad and i like i it's sad and i just like i don't know it's just like Rap is just Hollywood and it has all the problems of Hollywood mm -hmm. and that each one teach one shit is completely gone. And like you have some people still trying to carry that shit like no name and stuff. But like to what ears? And like, I don't know. I just like, I think y'all you watch FD Signifier. <laughs> yes. Love FD. Uh, he was talking about how like even his kids like don't really like rap 
but like there's more options for more black youths now. Like a lot of black people have been like embracing like, you know, like the ones who like listen to Hillary Duff and like alternative music. They're like, I want to make black alternative music this is our rock music is ours why why are we not allowed to make this so like i you know you're because even tizo kind of has that sort of vibe and like yeah. um lil yachty's switching to more of like a psychedelic thing because he never said he was a rapper just rap was just where he was allowed to be um mm. and i don't i think like the the i think we have we're having more opportunities or the internet it's like letting a lot of black teenagers realize like oh like this isn't the only like option for me because like we made a lot of this <laughs> and I'm allowed to embrace this and like you know Beyonce's coming out with the country stuff I feel like black music is going to st- keep thriving I'm not saying hip hop won't but hip hop I don't know it needs like a it needs something it needs something completely different I don't know um yeah I agree I mean I think it definitely is in uh need of like a re-up uh you know i think it has become very stagnant and i think it was because of like the oversaturation of the market but at the same time i think that like this is a natural progression like when i think about like country music there was a point in time when the country music that was being made there was those the originals who were like this isn't real country music this isn't what it was um you know i think that's a natural progression like same thing with jazz like when louis armstrong came out people were like this isn't jazz music you know i think that's a natural progression and i think we're just finally hitting that moment because we haven't been around for that long like you know it is is in people's lifetimes like there are people alive today who are like oh yes i remember a time before hip-hop um and mm-hmm. so I think it's just like a natural progression of like we've been like going up, 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 up. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's time for us to like shift and figure out what this is. And I do think that like the ladies, I think like they are really bringing about that change. But also I do agree. I feel like black people like since the creation of hip hop have always been relegated to that. And so now that we are at a point where it's like, no, I can be black and make country music. I can be black and make rock music. Like I can make whatever I want. I don't just mm-hmm. have to be uh, hip hop. And you see that like with the Grammys, it, like Paint the Town Red this past year was uh, nominated as a pop song, you know, whereas like even a year or two ago, they would have just automatically put that in the rap category, even yeah. though that's yeah. not a rap song. That is a pop song. Um, 100%. And so I, I do... I'm ex- I'm, I do think that the black people stepping out of that is going to create like a restructure in hip hop and a new sound, which I think we're like we're due for it. Like it's we're we're due for a new sound, for a new change, a new innovator, and we haven't seen that for lo- for so long. I think the same people have been running the game for so long now that it's finally time for them to like tap out and like the new people are going to rise up and we're going to like see new things and hear new things and realize that we can push this boundary even more forward um so yeah I'm, i agree i agree I yeah i guess i'm more like i'm just sick of the culture of like <laughs> the culture really yes. like the culture of hip of like the rap business yes and like it's kind of just circulated around killing teenagers and like yeah sexually abusing women (laughs) so like that's kind of where i'm at like it just needs a whole cultural fucking like reset yeah um and that's not a black thing that's that's a capitalism thing um that's this like dirty men with power being able to do whatever they want because of capitalism um anyway sorry about that (laughs) again this is brown sugar everybody no but i'm just like also shout out to again recentering queen latifah who like today is still like producing women rappers is trying to like um offer people's opportunities and education because she's like yeah nobody should be put into a room where they're told to like get it in or you can't get this album like yeah um, so, I mean, like, yeah, shout out to whatever comes next. And also in terms of genre, like, love Tyler and whatever he's been bending and has uh, been trying to get out of, like, this hip hop world. Same with, like, a Rico or a Dochi. Um, yeah, there's just, like, this new griminess because I'm, like, at the same time where Nikki and Young Money are thriving, I'm still listening to My Chemical Romance and Paramore. So I'm just, like, seeing more people who, Jaleel, are, like, yeah. blending those type of energies. Fair and that feels, Yeah, this rebelliousness 
of genres. Um, Okay, one more question um, that is like more brown sugar than hip hop. (laughs) We we made more (laughs) more hip hop than brown sugar, but um, you know, brown sugar is not even a great metaphor for women anyway. Um, So, would you ever tell your homie to wreck a home if it meant like? them fulfilling all of their feelings like if you could tell would you be the francine if you could tell that like your best friend was crushing on their best friend would you be like shoot your shot or tell them to sit down i tell them to sit down i'd be like bro you need to relax this if this was this situation i'd be like bro your friend is goofy as fuck he honestly doesn't seem like he actually cares about you that much he seems like he's more i've been reading bell hooks he doesn't love you he's infatuated with you yeah. he has mm-hmm. affection for you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm like, um, one, I'd be like, hey, girl, you be a messy to wait until this man is married to speak up. I think that's very selfish of you. Two, I don't think this marriage is going to last. So, mm-hmm. you know, just wait until it's over. And if you still feel the, way, feel the same, go for it. You know, but like, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't tell I wouldn't tell a homie to go wreck this marriage, wreck this engagement um, because it's it's giving like, oh, you just want him now that he's unavailable. And that's selfish. That's so selfish and rude and self-centered. So if like you felt this way the whole time, then you should have spoke up too bad that you did it. I would not have been Queen Latifah. I would not have attended this wedding ceremony with her. I would have been like, no, girl, you are wrong as hell for sitting up here watching this man get married you better keep stay home and and work on yourself read some bell hooks literally literally (laughs) yeah i don't think i could be the one but i'm just like the whole movie would not have happened without queen latifah so i'm just like (laughs) i don't know so now i just wants to know like when people fell in love with hip-hop and queen latifah's like when you gonna tell hip-hop you love it (laughs) I think what this movie shows and every rom-com shows is that men should not be writing women's stories without no. a woman present. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. For sure. I think, I'm sorry. I, think her, I think her character could have been so much more fleshed out. And it would have been, it would have yeah. been a better movie for it. I think it would have been a better movie for it. But, yeah. Yeah, because even Dre being like, you're just getting married because I got married. And she's like, is it a competition? And it's like, it I don't like know. It, it could is. be. It feels like it could be. <laughs> <laughs> but also only because you pointing it out like why are you calling me on my date when you got a whole wife at home um who you should be talking to after you just quit your job and spent the whole day with me again <laughs> yeah 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 and his wife was like he was like i need a wife that supports me in my decisions he's like bro you met she is being super reasonable she right is. now she's she like is. hey before you uh jack our fucking uh income maybe talk to me yeah yes also how much do you think was on that check? Like, how much do you think Sinai like then wrote this man to start his own record label? Thousands of dollars. Like, I feel like she emptied out her savings for this man. She blew her bu- her bonus, her advance on this man. I was like, it's got to be at least 10 gig. At least. I was like 25. Damn. See, I was like, it's 2002. <laughs> oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, 10 gig. <laughs> I mean, but that's probably 25. Enough that it, if she was walking off to go on her date, now she just gave herself a seed to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel okay. like I should say some positives because I've shit on it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you mind if I pull out some positives? Please. Yes. What are your pops? Um, well, first, despite everything, I think everybody was pretty good at acting. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some of the lines that the main character had, like the nothing but net that shit was ass but you know that's rom-com stuff that's just for rom-com stuff you know whatever um, wrong movie <laughs> huh? what? i was like that was for the wrong movie too i'm just yeah, like the, go back to what, what? <laughs> yeah what what is this um but, um uh what's it called um i like i don't know even though people are selfish they try to like talk things out reasonably like even the two girls I don't know. I also like that, like, they talk about, like, each other having sex and it's not weird. Like, mm-hmm, when she's mm-hmm. like, yeah, like, this basketball player's like, give it to me good, blah, blah, blah. He's yeah. not like, oh, he's not like weirdly, like, sl- I feel like that could have easily been, like, Slushy. something that was written. 
Yeah, yeah, and like it didn't. She's just like a grown woman who's allowed to have sex. Because she's the cool um, laid back home girl. Mm-hmm. But like, if she's like that powerful, like she's a powerful woman. She's allowed. She's just like, yeah, she would be getting like picked up by these basketball players all the time and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, True. Which is also like, why is she worried about this? Bonus? Like she's literally getting. Yeah. but also Boris didn't care about her I'm no, like yeah, he, I, understand, he I understand that I did and I think that was smart to put in there because I was like why they gotta show that he sucks somehow and yes. I did think that was good to put in there um most F is also great most F he's is great a, Yasin Bey is a phenomenal actor in yes. anything he's in he's an underrated actor in my opinion I agree mm-hmm. um I fucking love most F and anything um they definitely yeah. didn't fully utilize him in bamboozled although I did have like the I same just thought it. Oh my gosh! Well, How'd you feel? Oh my god! Well, we have yeah, post recording. We'll talk yes. about. But <laughs> I gotta. I, when we stop recording, I need to hear your <laughs> post post American fiction. But anyway, yeah. anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's good acting. I liked the characters. Well, like I wanted, I wanted good things to happen. Like nobody was like so annoying that I was like, oh, just just get hit by a car or something. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um. I don't know. I was having like fun. There was funny parts when they were just like when her and the basketball player are just kind of sitting there and they just go like, let's have sex now. And I go, let's like, you know, mm-hmm. there's, there was there was fun, smart moments. Um, yeah, I agree. I think I think that it was very well acted. I think everyone gave a very good performance. And I thought like I thought the film was watchable. Like I wasn't funny. I wasn't like, I need to turn this off. I hate this. You know, like it was yeah. watchable. I was entertained, even though these yes. characters sucked. I was still entertained. Um yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a good movie. I just have thoughts. But it's a good movie. Yeah, I thought it felt more romantic than comedic. Um yeah. like I didn't think I was laughing that often. No. Um but yeah, overall, still holds up. Um, if anything, just like Sadar girl, please uh, stop. Just Decenter like stop men in your life. Me. Decenter yes. men in your life, girl. And get you some new friends who ain't trying to just like help you wreck somebody's home. <laughs> also, center center men in their lives. Yes. Um, but yeah, okay, dope. Any final thoughts? Go watch Brown Sugar. Oh. One more thing. I'm so sorry. I watched an interview with apparently Boris Cujo and Nicole Ari Parker had a talk show together. And Sana Latham was on there for a hot second. Did you know that Sana and Boris dated for a minute? Oh, I did not. And apparently it happened before Brown Sugar <laughs> and before Boris and Nicole started dating. So it was so strange to watch this little interview clip and the two of them trying to talk about like, oh yeah, I was, I mean like I only really talked to him cause he was just like a model and he's just like, well she was stuck up. Um, but, um, That's so and funny. yeah, and so Nicole's like, oh, well this story feels a little bit better now. And I'm just like, huh? Okay. All right. Not I this real life tension. Also dated, like Tay Diggs at one point. Girl. You know, it was I the nineties actors. They were all in there together. That makes sense, but I'm just like not real life in the movies being parallel. She, Sana, she's still she's still looking great. She does. She looks amazing. I don't know what it is about that '90s rom com juice that just like they must inject it into their skin. It's just like I must look like this forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Final thoughts. <laughs> watch Brown Sugar. <laughs> yeah. Watch Brown Sugar. Check it out. Uh. Yeah. Watch it. Uh. I honestly. Don't think, I mean, they don't, this doesn't need to be made, but like, I feel like there could be a remake of this. I would be here for a remake. Yeah, for sure. But also maybe just like an alternate version. Yeah, um, in the blog era. Yeah. yeah. Right there. That'd be awesome. Be my next semester. Sorry, my room's a mess. I just realized my thing popped up. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening and see you next time. Woo. Woo. Stay black. Stay black.